Hello, I'm your superhero critic, and I'll stay super as long as you stay awesome. The Rocky Horror Picture Show is one of the most successful productions to have ever been released. Based off the 1973 musical stage show, The Rocky Horror Show, and being a parody of science fiction and B-horror movies, the film version starred Barry Bostwick, Susan Sarandon, and began the career of Tim Curry. The film has become a cult classic, being aired in theaters across the country for over 45 years straight where the biggest draw to the show is audience participation and is one of the biggest LGBT draws regarding Broadway shows and acceptance of their lifestyle. Which brings us to today's review where in 1990 through 1991, Caliber Comic released a three-issue miniseries adapting the play written and drawn by Kevin Van Hook. So without further ado, here's the comic book adaptation of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Even though I'm working through a trade, I still want to talk about all three covers. These covers are terrible. Each of them take a still shot from the film and just plaster it on a black background, throwing the franchise logo on top of it. And to me, that type of cover is always boring and lazy. And even though I know I can't draw a stick figure with a ruler, I wish the artist would not take the cheap way out. See, that's one of the biggest things that bugs me. I don't like when comic book adaptations of films just take clips from the movie itself and just say fuck it all and make that a cover. It's so lazy. You've already taken the steps to draw the characters out. Why not draw a cover? Again, I personally don't have the artistic ability to draw a stick figure with a ruler, but at least I would still try to attempt something unique and different. Some people are just stazy. Stupid lazy. But that aside, we begin at a wedding where our main characters, Brad and Janet, are attending their friend Ralph and Betty's wedding. Brad celebrating with his friend. Well, to tell you the truth, Brad, that's the only reason I showed up in the first place. So you are openly admitting that you took a class just so you could get closer to a girl you knew? That is stalker and 100% Toxic masculinity. Red flag right out the gate. You're getting a divorce. After Janet catches the bouquet and the wedding finishes, Brad takes Janet aside and bursts into song proclaiming how much he loves her and asks her to marry him, to which, of course, she says ecstatically, yes. The two agree to visit Dr. Scott in order to thank him for helping the two meet. You know, at least they waited until after their friend's wedding to propose burst into song and run around the church like assholes. <sighs> Some people are so selfish. However, one thing that I want to discuss before continuing the rest of the comic is how bad the art is in this comic. Everything seems to be shrouded in shadows regardless of where you are within the page. Every single panel feels like our characters are on an unlit stage and the spotlight is only on one character at a time. The other thing I want to bring up is the facial expressions some of the panels give us are honestly creepy and it's like they are staring straight into our souls and going to eat our faces off if we continue reading the book. These pages are so dark, they're darker than half of my jokes, and I'm an asshole. We then go to the story's narrator who tells us about who our main characters are, basically doing my job before going back to the story where Brad and Janet end up with a flat tire as well as meeting a dead end. The two then sing about life having a silver lining as they make their way to the castle. They then meet the castle's groundskeeper who helps them inside to meet the maid. You're lucky. He's lucky. I'm lucky. We're all lucky. However, I am normally the unlucky one. I just can't seem to catch a break in my life. But, hey, I'm still here to entertain you. 
As Riff Raff stares at us creepily, the next six pages are all a rendition of the most famous Rocky song, The Time Warp, which just shows the transies having fun and establishing future characters and plots that will take place in the future of the comic. The song eventually leads to Columbia's tap number before the transies all pretend to faint. Do any of you know how to medicine? No, I don't know how to medicine, but I know how to gung them. Oh, 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 superhero style. As Brad and Janet back away from the transy fun, our antagonist, Frankenfurter, originally played by the amazing Tim Curry, makes his presence known by singing about himself and letting Brad and Janet know flat out that he's a transvestite and not to be afraid of how he looks. The three of them then discuss Brad and Janet needing help calling someone to help fix their broken car. Frank promises to help. A satanic mechanic. I wonder if that's actually how Ghost Rider fixes his bike whenever it gets destroyed. Frank then invites the two to stay a little while while they wait for a drier morning in order to show them the man he has been constructing as he heads up the elevator. Magenta and Columbia then help strip Brad and Janet out of their wet clothing while trying to discuss what's going on. Some people would give their right arm for the privilege. You know, personally, I would give my nipples to sleep with Frank and Furter, but that's beside the point. <laughs> Get it? Nipple point. We head to Frank's lab to look what's on the slab as Frank reintroduces himself and Brad gets so mad over the fact that Frank has refused to actually do anything to help them contact someone that Frank, ignoring his requesting, asks personal questions like whether or not Brad has tattoos. I want to get a tattoo of a bigger penis on my penis so that I have penisception whenever I have a boner. Frank then announces what is really going on as he reveals that he has literally made a person slowly revealing to the entire room that his newest creation, Rocky, has been born, ending the first issue. Rocky loves Emily. Rocky loves. Issue 2 begins with four pages of Rocky enjoy being born and singing about it all while it seems Frank is just jealous over other people looking at his creation and falling for him, causing him to chase Rocky around the room. Eventually, the hyperness ends and Frank boasts his success of creating a person, asking Brad and Janet what they thought. I didn't make him for you. Exactly, I made him the fondle of my dongle. Frank is in ecstasy as he brags about his new creation and how manly he has made him. Frank then starts singing about how Rocky will end up being all while Rocky just shows off his manliness, working out as much as he can. Frank is interrupted by a motorcycle riding man named Eddie, originally played by Meatloaf, no, not that one, there you go, who bursts through the wall to Columbia's happiness. He then begins singing about hooking up with a girl for the next couple of pages, showing the audience that him and Columbia clearly have a past. However, Frank does not appreciate the interruption in saxophone music and decides once Eddie's back is turned it, to kill him with a pickaxe. That song. Frank goes straight back to promoting Rocky and acting like he didn't just murder someone, and the two new lovebirds leave the room. Later that night, Brad and Janet are both given separate rooms while Riff Raff scares Rocky away with fire. Both Janet and Brad cheat on each other with Frank. None of this would be an issue if you went polyamorous. That's why I am. Janet is roaming the castle, being distraught over her actions, but as she comes across an injured Rocky, an idea sparks as she begins to seduce him, to Columbia and Magenta's much delight. Janet then sings about having her virginity card taken and wanting to experience it again. Frank, however, is pissed off that Riff Raff let Rocky loose, but Dr. Scott shows up pissing Frank off even more. Everyone else then finds out about Janet. Janet and Rocky before Magenta lets us know that dinner is ready. Excellent. Under the circumstances, 
Formal dress is to be optional. You just need to make sure you keep your genitalia out of my soup. Dr. Scott then lets the room know what Eddie was like and that he was warned about the secret evil deeds of the people in Frank's castle. Scott demanding to know where his nephew is, so Frank reveals that they had been secretly been eating him. Frank is pissed at his creation for sleeping with Janet to the point he smacks her in the face and begins chasing her around the castle, insulting her and making her as uncomfortable as possible. They eventually make their way back to the rest of the group before Frank uses a device in order to freeze everyone in place. Freeze. Dr. Scott reveals that he knows exactly what Frank is and what he is up to, showing us that the castle is actually full of aliens, and Frank plans on transferring the entire castle to his home planet. Frank then becomes a creepy molester as he uses his device to begin solidifying everyone in the room, one by one, as they insult him and call him a hot dog. His last name is Furter, so he's German, which would mean he's a kielbasa and not a hot dog. So, get your meats right. Columbia, of course, is pissed off that Frank is such a toxic person in terms of relationships and demands that he picks between her and Rocky, but she, too, then gets frozen. Frank then shows how toxic people work when the rest of us don't believe what is the problem. While Magenta and Riff Raff are pissed off and tired of them still being on Earth and not going home like Frank keeps promising them. Toxic relationships. Empty promises that lead nowhere. So, as the narrator wraps up the story, we begin the final floor show that begins with Columbia and company singing about their own personal vices and what has changed about their lives throughout the film. Frank then joins the stage and sings about why he is the way he is and just embracing who you are and not letting other people hold you down. As a member of the transgender community, this message means a lot to people like me. Be who you are, and don't worry about other people complaining about it. So, I honestly believe that's why people have turned this movie into a cult classic. This comic, however, still sucks. The floor show continues with Dr. Scott trying but failing to not get brought into it, while the group of five just embrace everything and begin a chorus line on stage to be interrupted by Riff Raff and Magenta in their alien outfits, declaring themselves the new leaders of the transsexuals. Frank asks for time to explain his actions and begins singing about him giving up everything to follow his dreams. But Riff Raff declares that he is not going home at all and is about to be killed for the sake of everyone else's protection. Riff Raff then begins to fulfill his promise and shoots Frank, injuring him as Rocky tries to protect his master, climbing the tower, but eventually he is overcome by the power and they both die crashing into the pool. Riff Raff then lets out his frustration and apologizes to Dr. Scott about Eddie, as well as giving the three of them left since the comic doesn't actually show Riff Raff killing Columbia, but the ability to leave the castle unharmed. Magenta and her brother then celebrate their victory by once again doing the time warp as the castle leaves the planet, leaving our heroes in a heap. The comic then ends with a final note from the narrator. This comic is terrible. From dark shading to dark backgrounds to disturbing expressions and overall terrible art, this is a terrible representation of the source material, and you are 100% better off going to watch a live show like checking out the actors from The Narrow here in Virginia. So, with that being said, now that January is over, next week we're going to get a double review week to kick off things with January with a review on Primal Rage and Mortal Kombat as I dedicate this year's January to fighting game comics. I'm your superhero critic. I'll stay super as long as you stay awesome.